Thank you very much. I'm delighted to be here and to listen to my colleagues whose ideas are keeping me going, I must say. Um, my heart is uh, very sad right now about the war that's going on and the invasion of Ukraine and the obscene provocation by my government uh, of Putin. So I'm sad and upset about that. But in my field of uh, the sex trade research, I have just learned that um, two things are happening. One, we're being flooded with online porn shot by cell phones of Ukraine girls right now. This is, this is what's being produced. And this is what happens in wars to vulnerable women. The second thing that's happening is that right now on German sex buyer forums, which is where men chat about where they can buy a human being to use for sex, cheap, who will do whatever they want. Right now, the sex buyers are chatting about how much fun it is going to be to see all these Ukraine girls coming into the German legal brothels. So I, I, am, I feel the way I imagine some of you feel about this. It, it's hard to put it into words. But um, this is what happens to vulnerable women. And this is what I'm going to talk about today, some of the roots of this kind of vulnerability. OK, we can start with a picture of a 2,000-year-old beech tree in a Romanian old growth forest. This tree is 2,000 years old. As we speak, Organized crime groups are clear-cutting the Transylvanian forest, which are protecting, of course, all of us, just like the Brazilian forests are. This is my friend, Amelia Tiganis, who is a Romanian survivor of prostitution. Here she's speaking in Germany about how legal prostitution was her own concentration camp. Uh, she's a very courageous woman. I am a clinical and research psychologist from Prostitution Research and Education in San Francisco. Our NGO produces research for the purpose of social change and policy development. So you can imagine my delight at hearing the last presentation. That's what we've been doing for 20 years. And we have just celebrated our 50th peer-reviewed publication, which we produce with local NGO partners in countries around the world. We have a library of free resources at prostitutionresearch.com. The COVID pandemic has had severe impacts on women in the sex trade who are among the most vulnerable women on the planet. Because of quarantines, social distancing, government's neglect of the poor, systemic racism in all walks of life, failure to protect children from abuse, and the predation of sex buyers and pimps, COVID threatens many women's ability to survive. In order to understand prostitution and the risks taken by women in prostitution during COVID, we must understand what it's like to be anxious about access to food and shelter. How do you wash your hands without a sink? How do you stock up on food without money? or shelter in place without a home, asked an Italian homeless advocate at the beginning of pan the pandemic. There's a 75% overlap between homelessness 
and prostitution. Knowing they were risking their lives, many women prostituted during the pandemic. Poverty will kill us before the coronavirus, said an Indian woman in prostitution. Taking nightmarish risks to support their families, prostituting women in Cameroon, sought out sex buyers in hotels that were being used to isolate European men with COVID symptoms. It's time to make the connections between the business of resource extraction and the business of sexual exploitation. A free market approach to extracting resources reflects the almost religious belief that everything should be for sale. Anthropologist Peggy Sanday studied 156 cultures in which she categorized them as either rape-free or rape-prone. When the land was free of exploitation and destruction, women tended not to be raped. And when there was environmental degradation across all these different cultures, there was a much higher level of sexual violence and other interpersonal violence. Now, the cultural, political, and spiritual expression of these ideas has been alive in indigenous cultures for a very, very long time. They treat Mother Earth like they treat women. They think they can own us, buy us, sell us, trade us, rent us, poison us, rape us, destroy us, use us as entertainment, and kill us. I'm happy to see that we're talking about the level of violence that's occurring against Mother Earth because it equates to us. What happens to her happens to us, said Lisa Bruner, who's White Earth of Ojibwe in North America. <clears throat> Women's subordinate status means that when climate catastrophes occur, their access to safety and economic survival are threatened. Poverty, age, ethnicity, caste, disability, and geographic location put women at different levels of risk. Climate stress puts girls at risk for early marriage, which is one form of prostitution. And there's a name for it, famine marriages. Extractivism is connected to the notion of sacrifice zones, places that to their extractors don't matter and therefore can be poisoned, drained, or destroyed. Extractivism is a dominance-based relationship with the earth that's connected with fantasies of racial superiority because in order to have a sacrifice zone, you need to have people and cultures that matter so little that they're sacrificable. The attitude that we can sell or rent a human being as a sex worker is the same credo as that of men who cut down thousands of acres of Romanian old growth forest to sell to Ikea for cheap furniture. Ikea. <laughs> uh, this is the attitude expressed by a sex buyer who was interviewed by Victor Malarek, a Canadian journalist. I was buying a product. They didn't matter as people. They didn't exist as people. They were just whores. Sexualized racism entrenches the bigotry that women of color and poor women are disposable, and indigenous women are at the bottom of a race and class hierarchy, both in and out of prostitution. I would like to talk for a couple minutes about two phases of extraction businesses. The first phase, prostitution is launched and expanded 
when there's a boom market in an extraction industry. Second phase prostitution is also linked to longer term climate changes, droughts, fires, and floods that affect people's ability to survive. Here's what that looks like in a diagram form. You have resource extraction, and the immediate effect is the arrow that goes to the left, a boom in prostitution. The longer term effect of resource extraction is climate change, which then itself produces poverty, which leads to prostitution. Here's an example. Large numbers of men are hired to work on pipelines, fracking, mining, logging operations. Historically, these industries have exploited young, poor men who are paid more to perform jobs that no one else wants to do because the jobs are dangerous and unpleasant. Organized criminals like pimps, traffickers, and drug dealers come in to feed off the economic boom. Women and girls are trafficked. That's pimp. Trafficking, pimping is the same thing. Organ they're all organized crime. Women and girls are trafficked by pimps to these boom zones. So for example, the Bakken oil fields in North America, gold mines in South Africa, coltan mining in Colombia, and logging in Brazil. Same thing happens in all parts of the world when you have an extraction industry rolling. When an extraction sacrifice zone is developed, what happens to the women and girls in nearby communities? In North Dakota, in the Bakken oil fields, sexual assaults, domestic violence, and prostitution increase very dramatically when large numbers of pipeline workers come in to work in these military barrack style housing called man camp. Even when an extraction industry shuts down, the newly organized sex trade remains an enduring legacy of extraction and colonization. And this happens everywhere. There are also links between poverty, racism, sexism, and long-term climate change. In the global south, climate heating has already damaged the ability of many women to provide food and water to their families. As everybody at this conference knows, education improves the status of women and decreases vulnerability to prostitution. So, Young women in Ethiopia and Bangladesh have explained to us that climate stress increases sexual violence this way. Girls used to collect water for their families, that, and it took two hours a day to carry a 30-pound jug of water. After a drought, it takes up to six hours a day to get the same amount of water to their families. The farther the girls had to go, the greater the risk for rape. And because they were exhausted following this strenuous water collection, they, they couldn't concentrate on their homework. The economic and social forces that channel poor and ethnically marginalized young women in prostitution were evident after Hurricane Katrina in the US in 2005. In the two years after the economic devastation caused by the hurricane, young women from New Orleans were pimped to Las Vegas. New Orleans is an economically stressed area with a long history of slavery and, and race discrimination. That was the source region for young, poor African-American girls in Las Vegas with its welcome mat for sex buyers was the destination market. When women are unable to find jobs, when economic supports for housing, childcare, healthcare, and education are cut, then women in the US have prostituted for hamburgers or a tank of gas. 
A 2016 study showed widespread hunger among teenage girls in the U.S. who are prostituting in order to feed their families. The crucial question is not, did she consent to the prostitution, but has she been offered the choice to exist without prostitution? When women in prostitution are asked what they need, first on their list is housing. When governments fail to provide shelter to women and children, pimps provide housing via prostitution. Let me say a few words about harm reduction versus harm elimination. Extraction industries allege that drilling for oil can be made safe. Despite spill after spill, they maintain they can fix the pipes. Prostitution harm denialists say the same kind of thing. It can be made safe if legalized and regulated. There's no evidence for this at all. We need research on this. <laughs> we have some, so do other people, but that's not quoted enough. There's a tension between those in the climate justice movement who want an immediate ban on fracking and those who think that they've developed best practices and partnership with oil industry groups that would permit drilling and supposedly mitigate environmental damage. This is the same tension that exists between those of us who want to abolish prostitution and those who think they can fix it, which I don't think is a fixable institution. We need prostitution abolition and we need fossil fuels left in the earth. So in conclusion, I would say that it's essential to confront sex inequality as a root cause of vulnerability to climate change. Climate adaptation must build on existing efforts by women's rights organizations to protect and support girls. A forced choice between poverty and pollution should not be government's only option. And a forced choice between poverty and prostitution should not be women's only option. We need a feminist economics that puts women at the forefront. I want to say some words from Viet Thanh Nguyen, who wrote, the biological virus affecting individuals is also a social virus whose symptoms include inequality, callousness, selfishness, and a profit motive that undervalues human life and overvalues commodities. Our real enemy is our response to the virus, a response that's been degraded and deformed by the structural inequalities in our society. These structural inequalities affect all of us, but for women in the sex trade during the pandemic, they're life-threatening. The transformation of oneself into a sexual commodity leaves a gnawing sense of degradation and misery. COVID has exposed the failure of malignant capitalism. Who's going to pay for it were the last words of a dying man as he was put on a ventilator. The pandemic has highlighted how we all are failed, not only the marginalized and prostituted, every one of us. So we must reject the notion that there's a special class of human beings, mostly young, mostly female, mostly poor, mostly ethnically and racially marginalized who deserve prostitution in order to survive. Thank you.